Hi, I'm Cheryl Brown. I'm the editor-in-chief of All Recipes Magazine, and I'm here today with Gabe Kennedy, who is the host of our new TV show, The Dinner Spinner, premiering tomorrow on the CW Network. The theme of the show is home cooks facing off against each other to make um, quick, easy weeknight dishes. So we're going to give Gabe a similar challenge. We've asked Gabe to come up with a dinner that can be cooked in 10 minutes or less. To help Gabe make that time, he's going to be using the brand new Panasonic countertop induction oven that cooks in about half the time of a traditional oven. It uses induction and double infrared technology, which I personally don't understand all the details of, but if you're interested and you're, you know, want to know more about that, you can go to shop.panasonic.com. Um, Gabe is going to be making us a steak salad, and uh, tell us more about it. All right. Well, I'm super excited to be here. Super thrilled. Dinner spinner. Definitely check it out. It's going to be a fun, exciting show. And because I spent the whole season uh, watching other people cook, it only seems fitting for me to cook myself. Awesome. Right? Otherwise, like, that's not fair. So today I am making a, a, a really fall dish. Um, I love a piece of roasted meat every once in a while, but I love incorporating uh, a fair amount of vegetables into it. So today I'm doing a coffee crusted hanger steak with a salad of herbs and fennel. And there's gonna be a few other pops of color that are really seasonal. Um, I'm inspired to make this dish because I recently launched a coffee company uh, or a coffee line with groundwork that is aimed at saving the honeybees, something that's absolutely integral to our ecosystem. Um, actually, most of the ingredients used here are pollinated by honeybees. So this is kind of my, my dish um, for awesome. them and okay, to them. Cool. So with that being said, we're gonna get going with this uh, hanger steak. Awesome. So the key is really two parts. One is this rub. This is a coffee rub, and I'll run through everything here. And then the other is just the beautiful, simple ingredients that we have in front of us and letting those shine. Okay. So we're getting most of our flavor from these elements. One is a nice coffee. I highly recommend using my own, which can be found at GabeKennedy.com. <laughs> the other is an ancho chili uh, powder, fennel, cumin, uh, coriander, brown sugar, smoked paprika, red pepper flakes, and black pepper. Why the, why the coffee, Gabe? That's so Yeah, unusual. so there's a lot going on here, but mm -hmm. might I add, this is something that I would say most people can find in your pantry, right? There's a lot of spices that you use, and they're there, but like maybe you got them like in 2002, like for the Winter Olympics or something like that. <laughs> or, you know, Salt Lake O2. <laughs> but uh, they're just kind of hanging out. So this is a great opportunity to incorporate them into something that you can not only use for steak, mm -hmm. but you can use for vegetables, for fish, for chicken, etc. And can I also tell you, for me, on a weeknight, that looks like a lot of spices. Do yeah. I have to use all of them? So you don't have to use all okay. of them. I think that most people will have these floating okay. around their counter or their cabinet, but you don't have to. Okay. So here's my point with the coffee. This, like, when I'm looking at a dish, I'm looking at it like a, a symphony, like an orchestra. And what the coffee really allows us to do is have this, like, bitter, earthy mm -hmm. undertone. And then we're juxtaposing that with some brightness, um, some spice from the chili flake, all, you know, the, the spice from the, the mm -hmm. um, fennel and the smokiness from the cumin, a little heat from the ancho chili powder. And what you end up getting is this mix. I didn't add too much salt because I don't want to keep salt and spice. Got it. You know, sometimes salt I want it, yep. right? Well, salt to taste. And then, you know, you just throw it in a mason jar, be a hipster, and, like, keep it forever um, <laughs> in a cool, dry place. Awesome. All right, so I know that we don't have all day, so I guess I'll kind of jump into TikTok. it. Um, <laughs> what I did in – time doesn't start yet. You'll tell it me when the time It doesn't. I will start. tell you when it starts. That's and fair. <laughs> right when this goes into the oven. But I took a hanger steak. I find hanger steak to be really um, – it's wonderful. It's naturally very tender. It's very flavorful. Um, it's kind of the hidden gem of the cow. Some people call it the butcher's cut, um, the butcher's choice cut. And I rubbed this down a few hours ago and just to let all of these spices um, penetrate into the meat. You could do it the night before. I would definitely give it at least a little bit of time okay. to, for the flavors to come so together. So like on a weeknight? How long would I, what's my minimum I have to let it soak in? You could in? do like, you know, 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. It doesn't have to be a huge deal. Um, but at the same time, like you could also do it the night before, you know, as you're finishing up dinner, keep it in the fridge, and then mm -hmm. when you come home from work, like it's all done. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see how easy the salad is. So okay. we have our steak. It's really, it's quite delicious. I'm, I'm excited. excited. Me too. Um, but we're not going to eat, this is enough for like, I don't know, eight people. Okay. I think. All right. All right, so are Game, we ready I know, to... Let's, let's get it in. Let's absolutely get in. We can watch chit chat more. And Go mind ahead. you, this steak is grass-fed. It is, you know, I don't like to eat a lot of meat. When I do, I like to spend on quality meat because absolutely. I yeah. personally feel better. 
not only about myself and about the systems I'm supporting when I'm eating mm -hmm. this kind of this kind of meat, but just energetically, like it, it feels better Here. when there's okay. an animal treated with respect. Okay, so Panasonic oven. Awesome. Are, are we gonna count down the time? I say we go for it. Go ahead and put it in, and we're gonna get countdown. Our social media manager is here. Yep. All Ten right. Minutes. Let's do it. Okay. Go. All right. Rock and roll. I'm gonna get. Do you need assist? Oh, here's our tongs. Okay. We have tongs. <laughs> can I just tell you something funny about this? So you can grill, broil, bake, and still use this bad boy as a toaster. It's kind of awesome. And in New York, the big secret is that everybody has minuscule apartments and kitchens. And so I love that this is something that I could even have in my apartment. It doesn't take up much space at all. And I like anything that makes the weeknights faster. That's for sure. Okay. So time has started. Now. Not really that much to do, <laughs> but we get to prep some of our vegetables. Okay, cool. I'm, I love vegetables. I think they're the coolest thing since sliced bread, since sliced fennel. Um, so... A mandolin is a really great tool for the home cook um, or for the professional cook when you have to slice a lot. You just gotta be careful. Um, and so what I did is just shaved a little bit of fennel into some water. And the water allows um, the fennel to kind of plump up in a really nice okay. way. Do you have to use a mandolin or can you use a knife? You can use a knife, but it depends on how great your knife skills are. You know, I could, I could slice this pretty thin if I wanted to. Um, but I'm not gonna get it consistently as thin as a mandolin. You get prettier ribbons when you use the mandolin. You do. Although I'm, again, no dishwasher. I'm oh. lazy about washing it, so I always use the chef's and knife. And fennel is so yeah. good. Do you want, you want, you want yes, to hit it? Yes, I do. I do. Right. Thank you. It's like a nice breath mint. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this fennel. It's been soaking in water. I'm just gonna do a nice little shake real quick. Okay. So we're gonna dry our fennel off so that the dressing can adhere to it. I also have a fair amount of picked herbs. This could be a spicy green, it could be arugula, it could be watercress, it could be herbs. I tend to have a lot of herbs growing either in my back little garden or um, just in my, mm -hmm. uh, in, in my kitchen in general. So this is uh, cilantro, parsley, and mint. This and then great. because we like to use everything, we also have some fennel fronds. Gabe, can I ask you about the TV show while you work a little bit here? Talk to me, girl. Um, so I know you've been a contestant on a cooking show, but this was your first time hosting. What was it like to be a host, like you know, on the other side of the fence? It was really interesting. Yeah. It was a phenomenal experience. You know, like being on the contestant side, there's a lot of pressure. It's intense. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to be on those this shows. This was a really <laughs> fun, like lighthearted mm -hmm. show. So it was really wonderful to feel as though I was stepping into someone else's kitchen. That's awesome. You know, and really like, just watching them do their, their work. And it was a great learning experience for me, um, not only to like, just step into that space as a host, which right. is really something I've always wanted to do. Right. And I'm really grateful I had the opportunity. Um, but to like interact with home cooks mm -hmm. who are really passionate, who came up with these recipes. Um, and yeah, to be able to share the stories that surround the recipes. That's cool. Oh shit. <laughs> it's live. Could be a delay. Okay. Could be a delay on the <laughs> oven. I didn't hit start. <laughs> but I think we'll still have enough time. <laughs> just in case. That okay. oven is so fast. Well, a little bit of shallot. <laughs> the shallot is going to bring some uh, some bite to it. Yeah, and how much time do we have? Seven minutes. Seven minutes? We're, gonna oh, do we're it. good. We're, we're totally yeah. good. Um, so shallot is something that I do like to use. We restart it to 10. <laughs> no, you don't have to. I think we're going to be totally cool. You know, three minutes, we're just there not going to let it rest as much. Exactly. But things happen when you're doing it live and this when you're cooking. This is real life, yeah. This is real life. Let, let's, you know, let's keep it going. It's a nice challenge. Um, and now we're pretty much done. I'll be totally honest with you. Like now it's just a waiting game. Right. So pretty easy, right? We slice the fennel, we have some herbs. Um, there's a touch of pomegranate mm -hmm. because I love not only the color, but just like the, the texture and the and pop you that use, you get from that. Do you use apple in the salad sometimes as well? Oh, I almost forgot the apple. Okay. The most important part, or the second most important part, <laughs> aside from the spice, of course, and the coffee. Like that. So apple, um, a Granny Smith apple, mm -hmm. one of my favorite kind of just all purpose apples, mm -hmm. really acidic. And what I'm gonna do is cut it into little beautiful julienne. Um, a julienne is traditionally an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch uh -huh. by about two inches. Um, and so I'm cutting as thin as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, you could use a mandolin, but because I enjoy using a knife, right. especially a nice sharp knife like this one, um, it's kind of fun. Cool. So I'm cutting these into planks, mm -hmm. and then I'm arranging these planks into manageable sizes. And then I'm gonna just run my knife through it once more to create these beautiful. This is actually such a great cutting tip for other this? things. You guys as wanna well. get this on? Zoom in I'm on this. Some of 
right, cool. Just want to make sure. You know, there's a lot of goodness that's about to happen here. But you can do a lot, um, cut a lot of things that way. Stacking things to slice them is always a good, yeah. um, speedy trick. Stacking to slice is really speedy. It also makes you look like a pro, and it's fun. It's a great, you know, every time I do this, it's a challenge for, like, I'm trying to do it better every right. single time. I think that's kind of the beautiful thing about food, right, is you can never know it all. You never right. are, like, totally an expert. I, like, this is a learning process as much as it was when I first did it. You know, I'm looking Although at... Although now I can, like, look up at you. And... I see that. Like, I'm like, oh, I hope for the best on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at your dishes, spices, and um, I'm going to totally admit... Um, Food people have always told me, oh, you have to toast the spices. And I admit I'm lazy about it, because sometimes I'm like, oh, but that means it's more time and I have to use mm -hmm. a skillet. Uh, are you a firm believer in toasting, or what's your what's your philosophy? Yeah, so I, I do think that, you know, it's not totally necessary, but it really does make a difference. Okay. Right, when we're toasting, I love to toast spices completely individual. Okay. But at the same time, if you don't have that much time for this, we could just put them all on a sheet tray, toast them a bit, and that would be that. So what I'm doing, Cheryl, real quick, is yep. I'm just squeezing a little bit of lemon over the apple okay. to prevent it from browning. Awesome. Um, so color is really important in these dishes. Yep. And you know, apple as well as fennel, they both oxidize. And so that's why we keep the fennel submerged, and that's why the apple is. Um, well, the colors are, and the colors you, are gorgeous. On and when you salad. taste apple and lemon, it's so good. It's all good. Yep. It any citrus and uh, fruit reminds me of the tropics, like of, of Indonesia or something. Um, and then I'm also gonna just zest a little bit of lemon into this salad as well. So apple, some herbs, some shallots, some fennel, pomegranate, parsley. It looks so, so it looks so got nice. great te textures too. I mean, the crunchy pomegranate and the yeah. mix of flavors. So when, when I'm creating a dish, um, I learned this when I was actually on a, on a television show as a competitor, uh -huh. um, my mentor was telling me, salt, acid, texture, heat. Right. And so every dish that I create, I really try to follow that formula to some stand, some standpoint, right? Salt, we have you know, our seasoning. Acid, um, we have our lemon, right? Texture, we have our fennel, we have our shallot, we have mm -hmm. our apple. And then right. heat we have in the spice, but also the juxtaposition of hot pieces of steak on a cold salad. Right. Like that's really, really a nice experience. Um, so you have a, oh, you I have a question from Ingrid. She would like to know, this recipe looks absolutely delicious. What type of carb or starch would I serve with it? Ingrid, oh, that's good. great question, Ingrid. Yeah. You know, I don't even know if you'd need, need a carb or a starch. Mind you, I'm just making a little dressing of olive oil honey, shout out to the bees once again, and a little bit of black pepper and salt. But you know, I would do maybe maybe a complex carbohydrate. I would do something like a sweet potato, um, maybe a little bit of a roasted squash. You know, you don't, I wouldn't say throw this over white rice. I think that we have so much, so many health benefits in this that we want to continue to feel light and bright. Could you do so, a rice noodle though? Like, like, a, a, rice noodle. Almost like oh, a Vietnamese style? That would be style so good. Thing? This would be like a really great rice noodle bowl. Yeah, yeah. Cheryl, that's fine. There you go. Oh, yeah. Good teamwork. All right, and I'm going to use my hands. This is my favorite mixing tool. Totally. I do the same so, thing. Yep. Pardon me. Um, I'm just going to lightly. Clean. I can attest. <laughs> yeah. I did it. I did it before. All right. So now we have this. We're just keeping this super light, super bright. I'm going to squeeze a little bit more lemon. But look at how beautiful that is. I mean, it's it's summery, but it's fall -y. It's winter. It's, it's everything. Everything is going on here. So Robert wanted to know, how much honey did you add? Well, it depends how sweet you like it, Robert. That's really the question, but um, not too much. I just want to um, use the honey as sort of, I love the sweetness and the depth of sweet that honey brings mm -hmm. aside from a, you know, like a plain refined sugar. Um, but uh, it, it kind of helps the dressing adhere. So I noticed I didn't really make a separate dressing and then do it. I'm just freestyling in the bowl, right? A little bit of acid, a little bit of fat, mm -hmm. um, and a little bit of sweet. And if you want a little bit of heat too. And then we're gonna throw in some textural components. How, how are we doing with our, our cooking time? Four minutes and 20 seconds. All right, four minutes. We're, we're rocking and rolling. This thing is, yeah. Nice. Oh, I'm gonna just give it a flip. Hey, Gabe, what cooking? I don't know, that looks really good. It looks delicious. It looks great. It looks, looks delicious. Phenomenal. What cooking mode did you use for the steak? Because this, um, this thing has um, preset cooking modes, so you, you can don't have to guess. It will tell you how to do it. But you didn't grill. You did combo. I did a combo one because I'm trying to get it done in 10 minutes. I want mm -hmm. the heat coming from the bottom and also from the top. Okay. Oh. Cool. Awesome. Top down, bottom up. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is this is done. All right. Now we're just waiting for the steak. I'll probably pull it and just let it rest for a moment okay. so that when we slice it, it's not going to be okay. super major. Does the plating time count in our competition? 
That is a good question. I'm saying no. No. <laughs> okay, so maybe like I'll try to see if we can get it done, okay, but it would like be awesome if we did, but if not, no big deal. All right, so as it's getting ready, I'm gonna just lay, well first we need to taste, right? Taste, and I, and I have a, a show right. question for you too, as, as you plate. Salty, like salt, acid, mm -hmm. texture. I just got a piece of coriander, phenomenal. Nice. So, Gabe, oh, oh go, no, you go ahead. Teresa would like to know: Do you have to toast the spices you buy in the jars? Teresa, you don't have to do anything, but but Teresa's feeling my guilt. I like this. You, Thank you, if Teresa. If you are, <laughs> I would. I I always do think that toasting some spices brings out a little bit more depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we're also going to be roasting it, so there's going to be a little toasting that happens naturally as it's in the mm -hmm. oven. So don't worry about it. And it does apply to like whole seed, like seeds more so than the ground spices. Right. Although you can toast ground, but it goes way faster, and you need to really, really watch it. But they're not That's already toasted point. when you buy them in the you jar. You don't really yeah. have to toast. You should. I don't. I wouldn't say you. You actually should toast um, ground spices. The ground spices. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna say that these are just about there. Um, I'm gonna get them onto our nice. They look beautiful. And you know what's awesome? I have, I, clearly I have a thing about washing dishes because I don't have a dishwasher, it's always upsetting. Um, so when I use my cast iron grill pan on a stove top, I have to you know, hand wash that. Uh, that one can go right into a dishwasher, which is awesome. So if this I had is, one. Okay. So technically we're done. Okay, I'm gonna say like, time's up, hands up. <laughs> <Okay>. But <laughs> we're still gonna slice. Um, slice. I'm gonna let the, the steak just sit for one second. How much? Are we on time? You have two minutes. You're great. Two okay. minutes. So we're going to let it rest for just about a minute, and then we're going to finish this up. Gabe, what do you think, um, just thinking about the dinner spinner for a minute, what do, you, what do people have to look forward to? Like, what were, what were some of your favorite moments that you think viewers are going to be really psyched about? Yeah, so I, the dinner spinner was really interesting because it's it's a very authentic show, and mm -hmm. it has, in, in my, from my unbiased point of view, <laughs> it's really celebratory. You know, That's like, cool. we're celebrating home cooks, their experimentation in the kitchen, and Ultimately, you know what it is. What cooking is all about, right? Mm -hmm. um, this feels perfect. Can you actually. tell? Actually, that's a great tip for people everywhere. Can you tell me a little bit how you know when meat is done, whether it's you know super rare or or well? Yeah. So um, there's the whole closed fist uh, technique. So usually, by the way, I'd let this rest a little bit longer, Absolutely, but we're just going to yeah. rock and roll because we kind of have to uh, do it. Mind you, so the closed fist, right? The softest part is going to be like rare, and then uh -huh. as you go around medium rare, but at first mess with a thermometer, you know, use a thermometer and then as you become more comfortable, you can, um, you can start. Do uh, you have a, a kind of thermometer you love? Because um, again, I get these supermarket ones and I sometimes have to put like three of them in and take an average because they never seem to work. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah I like just a, a good old probe thermometer. Okay. Um, so just as I'm plating, I think that this is probably the most fun part of cooking is plating. You're because, 24 seconds. Okay. Just All right, I'm going to move. I'm going to move. I'm going quick. I just, I love plating because it really is an opportunity to like be an artist and sort of express yourself in a cool way. We have to wrap up. Um, Wait. Oh, no, no, no. 20 oh, sorry. seconds? No, no, no. Sorry. Sorry. What is our time? Time's done. We're done. We're done. Your last sprinkle. Okay, well this is it. The we're done. Peanuts almost made it on. Luckily we're we're done. So this is this is the finished dish. It's um, there's hazelnuts, there's pomegranates. Uh, it's a really beautiful kind of bountiful salad. Here, hand me your know. cutting board. Who gets to see? see who gets to check it out? Who gets the up close? <laughs> um, we've integrated meat in a really thoughtful way, in my opinion. Well, because you don't eat a lot of meat, but you do eat some, and I and yeah. I agree. Like I would, I, I um, am a red meat fan. Um, but I know I can't have it all the time, and so I think it, it should be a part of a meal, not the whole meal, and I think that's what this salad does so beautifully. Yeah, and if you wanted to put this over some rice noodles, that would be a phenomenal right. dish. But, right. you know, I, every once in a while, I'm craving a piece of red meat, and I'm, I think that we should be able to have that experience. Yep. But I think that being mindful of where that meat comes from and mm -hmm. how we feel when we're eating it and after we're eating it is an important component. Mm -hmm. um, this, to me, is a, is a really, you know, it's all that we need. Right. Um, it's fresh vegetables, it's filled with life, it's filled with the, you know, protein and roasted meat right. and s spicy, yeah. sweet, salty, acidic right. textures. No, I think the flavors are amazing on that. It's really good. It's now that you um, you used the oven today, is there anything, and you know how fast it goes, is there anything else that comes to mind that you would make in it that in a traditional oven takes like a long time? Um, so I would actually, 
I'm just going to play a few more of these up. Yeah, we have, please we do. We have the stuff, right? Actually, I have a question from Lorraine about that. She's like, can you tell me more about the grill feature of the oven? Um, yes, and um, just so you know, too, because I am not an expert in this oven, I was not on Thanks. the show, so I didn't get a chance to use it as a judge or a contestant. Um, any answers, anything that I can't answer will be answered on our Facebook page by, um, by people from Panasonic, um, much more eloquently than I'm going to do it. Um, but I believe the grill, it really is working like a traditional grill pan. There are modes on this that don't require any preheating at all, which is kind of awesome um, and again makes it faster but the grill is one of the things you do have to preheat because you are still going for a surface um, but I would I would have to refer to the experts to know more about that specifically but it is a pretty cool feature and then you don't also have grease and smoke going everywhere which I love because that happens with a grill pan too yeah yeah the induction really rocks and rolls yeah it's like it just heats up really quickly and I mean this this looks like it was roasted professionally for quite right. some time and it was in the oven for five minutes I didn't even touch it it's so got a nice char on it yeah, for that's sure kind of what's yeah. up yeah um, I'm just gonna you know I mean everyone deserves to have a little taste of this so I'm gonna just play it up a few more sure. of these guys right um, I think that hazelnuts you don't necessarily have to use just a hazelnut uh -huh. um, as far as the rub you don't necessarily have to use um, you know you could use any coffee, but I would highly recommend using mine. I, I know. <laughs> I know. You're feeling it's good, though. Um, and, you know, you can find recipes like this This recipe on allrecipes.com. You can also find the recipe on my website. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's all about getting into the kitchen and, and giving things a shot. You cool. know, I think that following your intuition with this, nothing is a prescription. Um, and, you know, you'll see that in the show, right? There's a little bit of, like, following your intuition and playing with food and having fun with it. Because right. ultimately... It should be a celebration. We're gonna sit down, we're gonna have a meal at the table, we're gonna right. share that experience together. There's a lot of like love that goes into cooking and mindfulness that goes into it. And so I think honoring that with like give, being kind to yourself when you're cooking, you know? You don't have to follow it to the T. If you want it sweeter, was it Rob who asked the question? Yes. R Rob, if you want it sweeter, add a little bit more, more honey, you know? And if you want more spice, then add some more crushed red chilies, you know? I'm a spice guy, so maybe I'll throw throw a little bit more CRPFs on there. And don't you think, I mean, it sounds super nerdy, but your point about kind of, um, you know, this being about love and, and feeding people, I, do, I mean, you've been on other cooking shows, and a lot of people are like, oh, all cooking shows are the same. Um, like, what is it that makes this one special? And is it because they're, they're just regular people, or what, like, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I think that you find, like, in the All Recipes community, really, really passionate people. Mm -hmm. And so these passionate cooks are allowed you know, are given the opportunity to go on air right. to showcase their own ingredient, their own experience, their own dish, something that they've created. I think that's a really phenomenal experience. And so right. to be able to witness that in a really right. authentic way yep. was really was really cool. And I think really touching back on all of it, like it is a very celebratory show. Yeah. You know, we're celebrating well, food. It's a celebratory show. There's brand. a competition. Yeah. You know? um, so we are out of time, so we're going to wrap up. But um, thank you for joining us today. And please, everybody, remember to tune in to the Dinner Spinner Show tomorrow, the CW Network. I know it's airing at 11 a.m. Um, our time here in New York. Check your local listings for what time it's airing near you. Um, but we're really excited. We think you'll love the show. And um, it's a great representation of the brand and just real people making real food. We know you're going to love the show. So awesome. tune in. <laughs> you get to see us. Exactly. <laughs> so thanks. I think we are. Oh. Okay. Awesome. That's it? Yep. That's it? No more questions? <laughs> <laughs>